So, welcome to today's lecture and uh, we will continue with polarization transfer and we will again go little more detail in nuclear overhauser effect. So, if you recollect in the last class we, we looked at what is actually nuclear overhauser effect and how experiments are done and uh, what we can get from nuclear overhauser effect related spectroscopy. So, to summarize we looked at the population uh, difference of two states for a particular nuclei give rise to an intensity and uh, if we compare NMR with other electronic spectroscopy the difference between the in, in, in NMR the difference between two states is very small therefore it is one of the least sensitive technique. But among all the nuclei that are available for NMR proton is the highest sensitive because its magnetic moment is higher and the population difference between two states is quite a large. We also looked at uh, to enhance this pol polarization that we had for enhancing the polarization between these two states say alpha states and beta states. If there is another spin which is coupled to this we perturb this by a radio frequency pulse and if these two spins say I spin or a spin if they are two coupled if we perturb I spin the effect of that will be seen on S spin. Now this can have a homonuclear effect or heteronuclear effect. Homonuclear effect is generally used for measuring the distance between two coupled spin and this coupled spin what I mean by coupled through space they are closer in space close proximity in space. In heteronuclear case this is used for transferring polarization from the higher sensitive nuclei to the lower sensitive nuclei like from proton, proton to carbon 13 and this kind of concept is very much used in heteronuclear experiments that we will be seeing in the next classes. Now then we will move ahead and define two class of NOE one was called continuous wave, wave like irradiation NOE which is, is called a steady state. So, we had seen that we irradiated with a continuous wave pulse and then we excited all the spins by 90 degree and we detected it. So, we need to do two experiments one experiment where we irradiate and the next experiment where we do not irradiate and then we take the difference between these two states and then what if we take the difference the signal uh, intensity will increase or decrease and this is called NOE effect. So, we looked at the NOE will be given by I minus I 0 divided by I. So, this is of the saturated spectrum, this is non saturated spectrum and then ratio with the non saturated spectrum gives the enhancement factor which is the NOE. So, we looked at the another way to do it is by irradiating with a soft pulse and then here is time for mixing the spins then we apply a 90 degree X pulse this was a 180 degree X pulse and then measuring the FID. So, here we if we vary the mixing time we can actually quantify the distance between two spins in this transient NOE because this gives you uh, the estimate how much your perturbation effect is moving. So, we looked at these all qualitatively and then we went ahead and try to understand what is the origin of this NOE effect and I left you with a question that uh, by doing those treatment of the population difference where the NOE effect is coming from. So, we will continue from that states. So, we looked at the population between these states P1, P2, P3 and P4 has that term is called D and then we measure that in X there is an enhancement of 2D. So, if you remember the previous lecture here the enhancement was 2D between these two states. So, we will continue from there and we try to look at the effect that is coming because of irradiation of spin A. Okay. So, actually we should remember that there is another phenomena which is all the time active and this is called relaxation process. So, in any of these phenomena where we excite the uh, nuclei they always want to come back to the equilibrium state and that 
phenomena is called relaxation and this relaxation actually drives the system towards equilibrium state. Now, so in this case as we have discussed earlier there are three kind of transition probability here 2 for A spins. So, this is called omega 1 single quantum transition again omega 1 single quantum transition for 2 A spin and 2 for X spin single quantum transition and single quantum transition. However, there was another 2 which is this is called double quantum transition. So, here both spin flips like alpha alpha state this goes to beta beta states and here alpha beta states goes to beta alpha states. So, this is 0 quantum transition. Now, uh, as we are irradiating the spin A, so single quantum transition which is because of omega 1 for A spin will be gone because we are irradiating it. Now, what is happening to the x states? So, single quantum transition for x spin can, cannot cause any population transfer. Why? Because we have irradiated and single quantum transition if you look at for x spin like here d by 2 and d by 2 that is the difference is, is in d here and here. So, from each of them is d and that is why total is 2d. So, that is not causing much population difference between states 1 and 3 and 2 and 4. Uh, so, are actually already at equilibrium difference. Now, so, so this is also not causing any enhancement, but let us look at something else and uh, let us look at this double quantum transition which is omega 2. So, omega 2 effect that is coming because of double quantum transition actually causes something and that is here. This is basically at this they introduce a, a parameter called T. Now, that is the steady state population will happen because this double quantum uh, relaxation is active. So, the it will change the population of state here P1 and P3. Now, so, omega 2 changes the population and because this relaxation is faster, so this happens faster than the saturating field and because of that there is a net gain of the state 1 and 4. So, if you look at here previously this is this is minus plus t and this is minus t. So, that is the net gain we are talking because of fast relaxing the double quantum transition that is the changes the population. Okay. So, now this that is what the transition changes. So, x will have p 1 minus p 3 plus t and x 2 will have p 1 minus p 3 plus t and that is what actually the enhancement that is what the net increase is happening because of the transition of double quantum. Now, similarly there is another phenomena. So, this is because of double quantum transition, uh, transition and relaxation there is another phenomena that is called zero quantum transition. So, zero quantum as we know that it is a spin flip flop alpha beta going to beta alpha. So, because of this zero quantum another state will happen and that happens between state 2 and state 3. So, here should be minus. Okay. So, now the population transfer occurs between state 2 and 3. Uh, state 3 has actually lower population than the equilibrium value and state 2 will be having higher population. Thus, there is a intensity of x transition is proportional to the population difference. As we know that what will be the distance? So, x 1 will be p 1 minus p 3 minus t 1 and x 2 will be p 1 minus p 3 minus t. So, if we looked at here what is happening? We are gaining some intensity by t because of this and in this case we are losing some intensity because of the zero quantum transition. So, there is a net gain in intensity and there is a net loss in intensity. So, NOE is causing two effect either intensity can increase or intensity can decrease and why this is happening? Not because of single quantum transition, but there is a another phenomena which is active at that time because of relaxation property 
double quantum and zero quantum. So, this double quantum seems to be enhancing the intensity of these states and zero quantum is decreasing the intensity of the state. Now, X transition have lost some intensity compared to these unperturbed states in the previous case. So, thus X transition either gain intensity or loses intensity. The gain in intensity is called positive Hanoi and loss in intensity is called negative Hanoi. Now, the magnitude of, of the NOE as we know the proportional to the difference in the two relaxation rates. So, which is actually referred to cross relaxation rate. So, what are those two relaxation rate? This omega 2 which is between state 1 and 4 and then here omega 0 which is between state 3 and 2. Now, so therefore, this cross relaxation rate depends upon difference between omega 2 and omega 0 and that actually gives rise to different kind of NOE positive or negative. Okay. So, where is positive NOE and where is negative NOE? So, positive NOE are generally occurs in a small molecules, small organic molecules while negative NOE is a common feature of macromolecule. Now, this is very interesting and I will leave you with this thought that why small molecule shows positive NOE and, and micromolecule shows negative NOE. So, let us on the basis of this let us try to think little bit what is happening in macromolecule and what is happening in a small molecule. So, macromolecule generally what we mean is like a protein. So, this is suppose a protein. Now, a protein has thousands of proton atom. So, this is active nuclei there are thousands 10 thousands of proton atom. Whereas, let us take a small molecule something like this where we have different protons here. Now, if you look at macromolecules what is happening because of this abundant new active nuclei the redistribution of magnetization happens very fast or very efficiently by this zero quantum uh, phenomena and actually uh, that that happens within the like distribution of the magnetization. So, because of this zero quantum phenomena distribution of magnetization leads to negative NOE. However, for a small molecule redistribution of population happens, but here it is mostly dominated by double quantum transition. So, if zero quantum is there, there is a negative NOE, if double quantum transition is dominating factor of redistribution of magnetization, then it is positive NOE. So, for macromolecules like we have in proteins, we have negative NOE. For the small molecules like a small organic molecule, we have positive NOE. So, let us move ahead that was a qualitative description of NOE, how NOE can arise and uh, how they are coming, what kind of NOE we have and we looked at the uh, two kinds of NOE steady state experiment or transient NOE experiments and the outcome in one case was positive and negative. So, let us little bit rigorously let us try to understand what is the origin of, of this NOE. So, as we understood that NOE arises due to interplay between relaxation and population distribution upon perturbation. Perturbation we are perturbing one spin like that we had seen earlier. So, if we have two coupled spin say I spin and S spin we are perturbing one spin either by continuous wave radio irradiation or by pulse radio irradiation and then there is a redistribution of population happens and there are already existing relaxation mechanism that actually causes the NOE that is what we have looked for in the last class. Now, we also look that time evolution of this population is a crucial process and that actually further uh, leads to the redistribution and readjustment of the population. So, let us look at generalized phenomena where we have we have to consider a system which is actually n level system. So, say here is the ground state and then there are n level system of these different uh, levels 
and then transitions are happening here. So, what will be the population and let us look at what happens upon perturbation so that we can understand what is the origin of NOE phenomena. So, if we start with this and we start perturbing the system because for any perturbation is very important the recovery of population of say any state i will be governed by the following equation. I will take a time little bit to explain what actually this equation means. So, here rate of change of population of ith spin with time. So, this is governed by few of the parameter like here this is the transition probability. So, transition pro probability between i and j. So, what I mean again I will draw this little diagram. So, this is transition probability between say ith state and jth state and what is the population of p j at any time and what was the equilibrium population minus the population of i state at any time and uh, that will be subtracted with p i 0 that is the equilibrium population. So, this two together is subtracted from here and then you actually. Um, uh, so, here you sum over uh, transition probability of all jth state and here sum over all uh, here again jth state. So, the population difference between j state and i state you sum over that multiply with the transition probability that gives you rate of change of population with time. Okay. So, as we discussed p 0s are the equilibrium population and p j is the population at any time t. So, if you calculate this equation we can find it out rate of change of population with time and this is called master equation. So, basis of uh, actually on the basis of this we can find it out what is the decay or what is the change in the population of any state that we showed in generalized equation between any two state like this state and this state or this state and this state we only know need to know what is the population at the any time t, what is the equilibrium population of these two states and what is the transition probability and then we one need to sum over all the jth and if we do that then we can calculate that dpi uh, with time. So, let us take a simple example like uh, two weakly coupled spin that is the A x spin. So, if we see the energy level that we had discussed earlier. So, this is alpha alpha state with the population p 1 then we have alpha beta state population p 3 and here beta alpha state with population p 2 and beta beta state with population p 4. These are different transition probability. So, here is a single quantum. So, this this from here to here is a single quantum transition from alpha alpha state to beta alpha state again single quantum transition. So, we have a here um, 2 for a spin and 2 for x spin single quantum transition. Then we have a double quantum transition like alpha alpha state going to beta beta state or p 1 going to p 4 that is a double quantum transition and here it is a 0 quantum transition alpha beta state going to beta alpha states. So, these are all transition probability and the population of various state. Now, suppose we have a m a magnetization associated with a spin and m x is the z magnetization associated with the x spin. So, the related population of p 1 and p 4 p 1 and p 4 can be given by something like this. So, m a that is um, that is z magnetization of a state will be half of p 1 this plus this minus this and this. Uh, so, that will be for a spin similarly for because why a spin here if you look at this transition and uh, here we are changing from alpha to beta and here it is it is going again alpha to beta. Okay. So, similarly for x spin one can write half of the population of p 1 plus p 3 minus p 2 minus p 4. So, we have the magnetization coming from a and x for two spin system. Now, so population change then we can put that in master equation that we have described here and uh, as we discussed we need only three things first the transition probability, 
second population at any time t and the equilibrium population. So, if we put that in the master equation for this two spin system, one can write it dp1 that is change of population of state 1 will be given by the transition probability of A spin the single quantum transition plus single quantum transition of, of uh, the um, X spin plus double quantum transition and this is the uh, population difference at any time t with p10 that is equilibrium population. So, we have to sum this and actually for omega 2 that is p4 and p um, the equilibrium population of p4. Then again single quantum transition for x for p2 states and single quantum transition for a of p3 states. So, if we sum all those we can get what is the change of the population with time for like p1. Similarly, one can find it out by putting all those and sum over the all states for p2. So, again here it will be a single quantum transition for this 0 quantum transition uh, and that will be multiplied with the population of p, p2. So I just go and explain you this is the p2. So, here 0 quantum transition means transition happening from alpha beta state to beta alpha state. So, if we take all this and again here single quantum transition, here single quantum transition for x, here single quantum transition for A and 0 quantum transition uh, for this spin third. So, if you take this we can get the rate of change of population of uh, state 2 P2 similarly for P3 and one can get for P4. So, now we got the population change with time for all these states. So, now we can define the equilibrium magnetization uh, that is actually m a 0 and m x 0. So, this is equilibrium magnetization for a spin and this is for x spin. So, as we said the magnetization depends upon what is the population in different state in the equilibrium state. So, that will give us the equilibrium magnetization of a spin. So, here if you look at what actually it is in a simple term it is a population of p1 and p2 minus p3 and p4. So, two of these states minus two of this state will give you uh, equilibrium magnetization for A spin similarly one can write for X spin. So, A transition are this and this X transition is for this and this. So, we just need to take the like uh, um, a difference appropriately so that we can get so for P1 this is the, um, the case. So, here and here that is the transition happening and if we go back one can see P10 plus P20 minus P30 and P40 for A and similarly for X spin we can get it. So, then rate of change of magnetization one can write it with time. So, for A spin M A and for X spin M X one can find it out um, by putting all these equilibrium magnetization. So, here 2 into omega 1 of A that is transition probability for A spin plus 0 quantum transition probability plus double quantum transition probability and that is difference of magnetization for A spin at any time T minus equilibrium population and that is added with the double quantum transition minus single quantum transition and the difference in the magnetization of X spin. So, similarly if one can write it for X spin uh, one can find it out this will be the um, like with transition probability this is the magnetization. So, now here one can find the rate of change of magnetization for both spin A spin and X spin. So, then let us simplify this, this uh, complex equation and for that let us define that here sigma a one can write it this term whole this term one can write it sigma a and sigma x we can write it whole these terms. So, uh, we can simplify and then define this sigma sigma is omega 2 minus omega 0 that is double quantum transition minus 0 quantum transition. So, if we define this then the previous equation that we had simply doing a little bit of algebraic representation we can simplify this equation. So, rate of change of magnetization of A spin can be written 
like rho a. Um, so, if you look at the previously here we have defined this as a rho a minus this, this is sigma a minus this. So, that is what we have written here rho a minus sigma Sig, uh, rho a minus magnetization of a and equilibrium magnetization and uh, sigma a x into this. Similarly, for rate of change of magnetization of x spin one can write like this. So, here we have two term rho a and sigma a x here rho x and sigma a x. So, now if you look at here what is happening? this is auto correlation function because they are correlating with self. So, A is correlating with A. So, one can define entity this rho A and rho x are auto relaxation rate for spin A and spin x and this is called cross relaxation rate self correlation means like it is correlating with it itself what was the magnetization or what was the population at time t with time t plus delta t, but cross relaxation is correlating with other spin. So, that is what here is sigma x. So, uh, sigma x is called cross relaxation rate between two spin a spin and x spin. Then one can write actually a generalized equation for um, rate of change of magnetization like this we can write d m um, with respect to d change of magnetization m with time one can write for R and M. So, R one can define R and M are basically here M is a column vector. So, here um, like we can write here column vector and then uh, vector representing deviation from the magnetization from the equilibrium value. So, like previously here this is the M A and one can write the R is a matrix of relaxation rate. So, we, we call it either auto relaxation or cross relaxation rate. So, we can write the magnetization product with the um, relaxation rate like for two spin one can write this M will be column vector matrix for M A minus M 0 A M X minus M 0 X and one can write relaxation matrix that is here the uh, auto correlation rate of A minus cross correlation rate of A x minus cro here cross correlation rate of A x uh, divided by cross correlation rate of A x minus uh, auto correlation rate of X. So, that means the change of magnetization of any spin now you can define in two terms one is relaxation matrix term and then actually magnetization uh, uh, deviation in the magnetization from its equilibrium state. Okay. So, if we can define then we can generalize the equation what happens upon perturbation, uh, how the population gets redistributed or in another term how magnetization value changes. So, if we can see that then one can find it out what will be the case for a steady state NOE. So, here in steady state NOE what we were doing? We had a two spin, one spin was A, one other spin was X, one spin was saturated and we are looking at the effect of that saturation on the other spin. So, now if we perturb one spin in the steady state you know, just to remind you we are doing experiments like this, we are saturating this, we are applying a pulse and looking at the response of that perturbation. So, this is saturation pulse. So, if we do that what is going to happen of magnetization of, of the other spin if you irradiate. So, if for a serious state NOE if you spin x what is happening because of irradiation of spin A that we are going to look at in detail using this generalized um, magnetization form that we had uh, in few lectures. So, and how this gives rise to enhancement in the magnetization or reduction in the magnetization that actually results in the value of the positive NOE or negative NOE. So, that is going to be topic for our next, uh, next class. Uh, so, I hope that you understood this and if you have a question please come back this is a little bit mathematical. So, we will go slowly and we try to develop the concept of origin of NOE in a more rigorous manner more mathematical manner. 
and we will continue with steady state NOE and transient NOE how the enhancement comes because of, of the perturbation of a copper nuclei with X. Thank you very much.